What's up guys, it's 7demo7 7 here and thank you for joining me on this power distribution board installation by Overcraft and Team Legit. We're going to take this all the way from breaking down your current quad to installation and all the way to programming the buzzer in base flight as well as your battery voltage mo monitoring. I have to tell you the guys, I really um, think this is an amazing product and I'm glad I can share it with you. Okay guys, if you're following along with this, I'm assuming you've probably built your own copter, you're going to have all the tools that you're going to need. Uh, just quickly, I'm going to mention you need a 2mm um, hex driver. This says 5 five millimeter driver and this is for the, um, the bottom screws and nuts here. And I also have this just for my, my props. I'm going to go ahead and start by taking off my props. So I'm going to go ahead and take everything apart here. Of course, you're probably going to need some nippers at some point. Just to one of the reasons that I'm going to be switching over to this craft, no, not only is it for uh, adding in some LEDs on my craft, it also is for room. I'm running out of room very quickly, and I'm, because I'm running a PDB board on my, my quad right now, um, I don't have a lot of room to put my uh, video transmitter in. It's very cramped at this point, but I'm just taking off my... This is my Lemon RX um, satellite receiver. I've just the bottom ones. Well, really you don't have to take apart your upper plate here. I'm going to take this guy off here. Hold that thing. There is my upper plate. Okay, next step is going to be to disassemble this um, Naze 32 up from the bottom here drilling out these holes big enough to where you can get your standoff uh, screws through. So it's a really cool modification. You just unscrew these basically and that whole um, maze board can come apart. If you don't do that, when those are, are sealed in there, you actually have to take apart the entire frame, all, what, 16 of these uh, screws. And it's really a pain. So it's a, it's a cool modification. It Remove the nylon nuts that are holding in the maze board. What I want to do is isolate uh, the power distribution board so that I can start to desolder the uh, so that I can put it on start soldering the motor leads onto this board but we won't need to know uh, you know how long those leads need to be until I actually get the overcraft team legit board seated in here so I'll probably just solder it right then and there here Hey guys, this is kind of funny, but um, I always forget, you know, which wire goes where. So basically, I made this a little, a quick little diagram. I should have taken a photograph, but I'm using my uh, iPhone right now to make this uh, video. So, so I just put brown is up on these uh, motor wires, and so I'm gonna pull off my naze board here. I'm first, I'm gonna pull off the signal wire from, or my wire lead coming from my receiver with my PPM wire, and then these are all the motors leads. I'm gonna pull these off all at one time. And this is also my buzzer um, that goes to uh, uh, my little piezo buzzer. So leads those go into. All right, so this is my lead. Let's see here. First off, this is the power. I'm just gonna show you this to you guys here. This is the power going to my VTX. It's a direct link in. Uh, this is the power going to my battery, which is right here. And everything else is all my ESCs, uh, ESC leads. So I'm gonna take this off of here and actually desolder or actually I'm just going to clip them off because obviously they're going to be shorter. I do have to say uh, thank you to everyone that's subscribed to my channel. I really appreciate it. Um, it keeps me motivated to do these videos because I always think of it like this. You know, I like to share. Um, I like to make videos and um, I like videos that are clear and concise. Um, I, I don't like videos that are very confusing or you can't hear the audio or you can't see what the person's doing. So that's why I put these videos up. Um, there is um, BMS Web. I hope I get that right. Um, he's a guy I learned from a lot and his friend who just started posting videos about the sonar capabilities. I really like those videos. I mean, those guys are doing a really great job and I really appreciate it. All right, I've got my little standoff. So let me clean up my bench here a little bit. Or as Bruce Simpson likes to say, the bench, the bench. I like that guy. He's, he's so great. I learned so much from him as well. I mean, Bruce Simpson, if you're watching this, I, I hats off to you, my friend. This is my Lemon RX. It is a PPM only um, receiver, and it just looks just like this. We're getting down to the bare bones here. 
Now my camera, this camera was really hard to, to get to stay in one place. I eventually put a, a, a zip tie through it along with some hot glue. The hot glue was not holding it enough, so great camera guys. This is the 2.1 millimeter lens, which is a wide angle lens, and I um, got the advice from Daniel on his, his um, I think it's RC te test flight, uh, flight test. It has almost 180 degree field of view and it is fantastic. I mean, when you're coming in for a landing, you can actually spot your landing instead of just having the blinders on, only seeing a very narrow, uh, like 90 degree uh, field of view. But I want to say surveil is zone, but it's not surveil is zone, it's surveil zone. Um, this is one of their cameras and I really like it. I believe this is a 600 or 700 TVL line camera and it's great. And I don't know if you guys can tell, but I have it angled up. So that when I the craft tilts forward, I can see where I'm going instead of looking at the grass. So, all right, guys. Um, so you might have noticed that I placed um, one, two, three, four. This is motor one, two, three, and four. This is the front of the craft here. This is the back of the craft here. Uh, once you take everything off, it's very difficult because it is a symmetrical frame uh, to tell what is what. So you might as well put some little indicators on there so you know what's what. So while I was off camera, I did notice a little bit of a compatibility issue that might just be with me because I use happen to use the surveil zone uh, camera, but um, and I don't normally use this little uh, carbon piece here. But when I mount my camera, it's usually uh, right about here, which is covering over my uh, video um, camera lead that would solder directly into there. I'm not gonna cover doing this because you're gonna probably have a different camera than I will and my setup will probably be a little bit different so it's not something that really pertains to the overcraft board but keep that in mind if you are using a board camera you're probably not gonna run, run into any issues whatsoever I'm gonna take this off once again now I'm gonna go through the arduous process of actually taking off every single one of these screws so I can mount this in <laughs> Okay, my friends, um, here's where I'm at right now. I'm taking off this upper, the upper board, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to weigh this with uh, all the screws removed here, of course. Okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to weigh the uh, previous plate that I took off my quad, which is 20 grams. I also took off the, the period distribution board here, uh, and I also had the lead for my... Uh, battery already soldered onto the other plate so and um, this is the piezo bu buzzer that I um, removed from the other quad and also this is this is this JST plug is gonna simulate um, I'm gonna put two of these on there simulate the wires that I took off of the quad the, the ones that I cut down so that adds up to about 39 grams and I believe the the overcraft PDB board is close to 40 45 grams somewhere right around there so I'll get an exact um, match for you guys All right, guys, uh, not to beat a dead horse or anything, but you can see how much longer these uh, M8 screws are. They just really are M3, M3 by eight, if I can stop dropping this. But anyway, um, like I said, you know, maybe you would want the smaller screws to go in there and uh, break away in a crash, but it's gonna, it's basically gonna ruin all your standoffs. It's gonna rip all the threads out. And, you know, I, I'm gonna take the risk by mounting some some better hardware in there. So M3 by six would probably be more of an ideal um, size rather than the eights. Uh, but like I said, it's not a huge weight penalty. It's only seven grams uh, to three grams. So. so what I'm gonna do on the overcraft board here on the bottom of the board, I'm gonna place these screws up from the bottom. All right, guys, so what I did is I put a little bit of painter's tape over these screws because I know that as soon as I flip this over, what's going to happen? All the screws are going to fall out. So this way it keeps it in place. So let's get everything lined up here for our main screws on our arms. And what I'm going to do is I'm just basically going to place one arm at a time here. So there we go. That one went through. There we go. Okay, I'm going to place one screw and one bolt on each arm just to get it started. Alright guys, I'm all done with putting the frame bolts in and this is what it looks like. So what I have to do now is kind of determine how I want my motor wires to come off the ESC and solder into the board. I have a feeling what I'm going to do is 
bring it straight in and then make a little 90 degree turn and solder in in this direction. To need to strip these cut and strip these wires to the proper length. Well, I'm just keeping in mind uh, what my positive and negatives look like here and this is going to be like this. I'm going to strip about two millimeters or so off of the, these wires here. There we go. Okay. Get a little bit of solder here. There we go. There we go. We've got positive to positive, negative to negative. What I like to do is go in little circles here until it um, goes on. And you can see it's just starting to deposit right there. That's actually a little bit too much solder there. I don't like to have that quite that much here. Just a little tiny pool. Right, so here we go. And it just melts right on there. Make sure the two pools join and it's a perfect solder joint and that's about as perfect as it gets right there so there we go so you can see nice solder joints nice and shiny uh, there's no cold joint there whatsoever so that's a good solder joint all right guys <clears throat> so this is my naze 32 board and uh, i ran into a little bit of an issue here i'm going to tell you about uh this set of pins right here is normally uh, soldered on the very top of this board and when i had my other setup going I decided to solder these on the bottom because it gave because I had some I had the PDB board underneath there and also the uh, RX was underneath there as well so I needed some clearance on the top so I opted to solder these on the bottom well that's gonna be a problem right now because when I uh, put my NACE 32 board in here I'm not sure what, exactly what that is but it's getting right in the path of my number one motor let me see how this would work yeah that would be um, a problem so I think the best solution is to, in the CLI for the NACE32, is to go ahead and turn this 90 degrees to the right and plug my motors in here if I have uh, enough motor lead here, that is. I think I do with all these. I think I do. Yeah, I do. Um, and then my VBAT, uh, my, my battery uh, is going to be uh, plugged in here. I'm going to basically solder this. It's going to plug in here, and this is, uh, excuse me, this is not for the BBAT, this is for the buzzer. This is, this is basically going to be soldered into these two leads, which I can get that soldered in right now. So, so I'll go ahead and uh, mount up my, uh, my NACE32 just like this. Okay, guys, it is plug time, and I'm going to give Team Legit some props here. Team Legit is the, is the guys that are now importing these uh, frames um, in from, gosh, I don't even know where they come from. I think Switzerland or something like that? That would be my best guess. Um, but Team Legit is going to be the exclusive United States dealer for these boards. There's so many people that have gotten them and ver are very happy with the uh, the boards. So you're going to probably add me into that list of guys that are going to be very happy with this uh, PDB board. It looks great. It looks professional. I mean, if you looked at this, you wouldn't blink an eye. You might think it, it was a blackout. So, All right, so I've got my posts in here. You know spin this guy around here so arrow forward is normally the way it goes I'm gonna rotate it 90, 90 degrees right okay guys uh, in case you're interested I'm gonna go ahead and um, solder up my, my battery buzzer and I have a JST plug that's gonna plug right into the plugs on the uh, the board guys so I have my VBAT and my buzzer soldered up I didn't think I was gonna do the VBAT but I decided to go ahead and do it that corresponds with the bottom of the board here. It says bat, buzz, and telemetry up there. So make sure you keep your positives and your negatives correct as you're plugging these in. So the red wire is going to go to the bottom, which is the plus. All right, guys. So this is the VBAT and the Lost Craft buzzer um, plugged into the NACE 32 board with it turned 90 degrees. And uh, you can just see how clean this build looks now. I mean, before it was just a huge mess of wires. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and start to put on the top plate here, and I'll show you what it looks like in just a moment. All right, guys, I'm going to show you what the uh, all-up weight is of the quad here um, and with the my camera. And I'm going to put this on here. Okay, so... Without battery or a Mobius, it is 362 grams. You're going to add the Mobius in. It's um, 394 grams. Let's see. If I ran that with a 1300 uh, milliamp uh, 3S, whoa, <laughs> that would be all up weight of 500 and, ooh, 498. If I'm running a 2200 uh, milliamp battery, that's going to be 
550 grams. So it added a really lightweight quad. And I can test it to um, the motors are smaller than some of the other motors. That takes off a little bit of weight there. Um, like I said, you know, taking this off and adding the other PDB board in, it, there's not much of a weight difference. So actually it's going to be within a few grams of each other. Okay, what I'm going to show you now is the buzzer feature, which is you can activate the buzzer uh, manually. Um, and I'm going to show you that right now. I'm going to go ahead and plug in my, um, after I turn on my radio, turn on, and then I'm going to go ahead and plug in the quad. And the buzzer also gives you a couple of um, audible beeps telling you when the quad is ready to be armed. You'll hear it. That beep, 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 that is saying that um, it's done all of its calibrations and it's ready to fly. And you'll see here that I'm going to, go, going to activate the switch here. And I have it on a three position switch, the down to our activation. So I'm going to go into uh, base flight right now, which is on uh, the Google Chrome uh, application uh, that I've already downloaded. I'm going to show you how to activate that feature in the um, setup menu. One of the reasons that I move my NASA 90 degrees to the right is to get this USB port right here on the side because previously I would have to come in through the posterior section here and it's really a pain to get in there, especially when I have my video transmitter in there. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this into my NASA 32. But what we're going to do is we're going to click on mode selection. And what I do, what I have here is on my AUX3, um, I have my three position switch that I just showed you um, a moment ago. Um, that's going to, uh, you can see that when I activate the medium and the low, it has the, the beeper. So that is my beeper control there. So basically what you have to do is you have to activate this switch on your radio and then have it, um, have it move along almost like with your uh, flight selection so what you're going to do is make sure that you have these boxes checked. I just have it checked on two boxes in case I forget which, which position I have it on. But it's a really convenient feature. So What I'm going to do is go into now is the, uh, the VBAT setup. Uh, and we're going to go into the uh, configuration tab. So we're in configuration menu. And this is in base flight, not clean flight, guys, just to let you know. It's a little different. I might be switching over to clean flight at some point. All right, so let me zoom in here. And we're going to look at the battery voltage on the left-hand side here. And you can see that I have the minimum cell voltage at 3.5, which is what I usually set my buzzers up to. A maximum cell voltage, I know it's supposed to be 4.2, but in case I happen to overcharge mine a little bit, I put it at 4.3. So if it's anything above 4.3, it's going to buzz. And what I've heard from Overcraft himself, he said to keep the voltage scale for 3S at 110. So um, that's how you set up your VBAT. Okay, so we've, uh, I'm not sure why that's not ringing, but it should be. So we'll see what's going on with the VBAT. All right, guys, so um, when I just ran this battery, I the battery voltage uh, monitor did not go off, but you can hear the now that it is actually going off. It's not super loud, but it's at least it's something that if you're flying by yourself, you can definitely hear it. Um, but the this battery, I did run it down to 3.4, and I was like, where's the alarm? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this back into the uh, the, Na the NAS32 base flight um, configurator. Once again, I'm going to aim this uh, up at the, the screen. I'll show you exactly what I did wrong. Okay, I had all of my levels set up properly, but so you can see here battery voltage uh, 3.5 minimum 4.3 and 110 so that was all selected correctly but what I didn't select up here in the, the uh, features um, I did not have this this checked right here and I'm gonna zoom in on that is that says enable battery voltage monitoring so that was not checked so I just um, so uh, like I said guys I'm kind of learning along with you guys and now I'm testing of course you test all of these things before you actually get out to the field um, and so I'm glad that it works. So that is the sound of the uh, low volt voltage monitor and this is the sound of the lost model beeper. Okay, that's activated on my radio. All right. So everything works and we gotta go ahead and turn off the lights here for a second. Check that out. Look at those bright LEDs. It looks so clean. Um, I still need to put my camera right here. I just haven't gotten to that portion yet. Um, I maybe make, we'll make another video for that. Maybe not. 
Got the nice red tail lights in the back. It just looks so fantastic here. So I want to thank Team Legit uh, for sending me this uh, PDB board and also for selling this great frame. Um, it, it's really amazing. You get quite a lot of value for your money and that's uh, one of the things that Bruce Simpson uh, goes over on his videos which is just a lot of value. So once again, this is 7Demo7. I appreciate you guys' time and support. Thanks for subscribing and I'll talk to you later.